Hey everybody, Raul here for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the extraordinary honor and pleasure of chatting with none other than the K3 Sisters Band. We have Kelsey, Kristen, and Kaylin. Here we are, yay! There's so many exciting things to talk about, ladies, but we always like to go to the past. How did you get started in music and uh, the fact all of you play bass, but we'll say, you know, how did you get started on bass as well? Well, we just first want to say thank you so much for having us on Bass Musician Magazine. It's a complete honor for us. Yes, we love you guys so much. <laughs> but coincidentally, it did not start with the bass guitar. Ooh. <laughs> it actually started when we each turned four years old. We grew up in a super musical family, but our parents started us on the fiddle, as we call it here in Texas. Mm -hmm. This was our first instrument when each of us turned four this is the instrument that we learned how to play. Yes. Wow. And this is one of our first ones. We have it here in the studio. And we were just, you know, looking at it and how much it is similar to our stand-up bass here as well. So we wanted to give a little side-by-side. -side. <laughs> yes. As you can see, they are pretty much the exact same shape. Yes. So it's really unique to see how we started on the fiddle and now... This is the one we play now to this day. Kaylin and Kelsey <laughs> love playing the Texas fiddle, as we say in Texas. There we go. You know, if, you play a, if you're in a band and you're in Texas, you got to have a fiddle in the band. That's a saying. Nice. <laughs> but yes, we each learned to play with the Japanese Suzuki method, each at the age of four, I believe it was. Right, Kaylin? Yes. And then we would play around with our parents because they were in a band before us at different fairs and festivals and theaters. And then in 2009, that's when we actually formed the K3 Sisters Band. <laughs> nice. Nice. And with the Suzuki method, it's more of a, a formalized system. I don't know that everybody's acquainted with it. How, how exactly does that work? Yeah, so it's not like actually reading music. You see the numbers correspond with the finger that you have to press on the on the note. Mm -hmm. That's like the best way I can describe it, I guess. So it was kind of a way to do it without having to read music. Because actually, fun fact, none of us read music in the band. <laughs> yeah, we, We've all learned by ear or, um, and the fiddle was the only instrument that we've learned with lessons. Every other instrument we're self-taught or by some lessons from our dad, AKA the Bruce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it certainly helps to have your teachers in house, but again, it is an ongoing progression. And a whole lot of music, it, it wasn't even necessarily written. You look at a lot of the early jazz, it, they, those cats knew all that by memory and they had to you know, have it all stored up here. So that's certainly a, a good way to go. When we look at how you guys, you guys have amassed a massive amount of followers on social media. I mean, we're talking millions of followers, billions of views. This didn't happen overnight because you guys have, you have up to, you're up to 14 albums, the most recent one being Jet Black Hearts. Tell us about this whole progression. I mean, a lot's been going on over time. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, we did form the K3 Sisters Band back in 2009, and our dad actually found a bassist at the time who played with us for quite some time. And then one day, like he got married and started to have a family. And so we were out of a bassist. No. And so we were like, what's going on? But we had this family band meeting because then it was the five of us, the three of us and our parents. And we just said, we're going to keep recording music and we're gonna learn the bass. And so we were actually doing a coffee house residency in downtown Dallas. Oh my gosh, this was yes. the original Ibanez bass. <laughs> our dad actually, it's funny, our dad had this bass for many years. It's like a 1970s era Ibanez, but he never knew how to play it. Oh, wow. And so when he commissioned this, this bassist to play with us, this is the bass he played. But whenever I started to learn how to play bass, which was back in 2018, when this was happening, it was too big for me. Like that thing <laughs> is a monster. And so we bought this Gibson SG bass. And this is the one. Oh, it's my baby. Yes, we may or may not have named her Ruby. But, you know, <laughs> that's an exclusive little tidbit. Not many people know, Raul. Here we go. <laughs> but I just gravitated towards the bass. It was just such a fun instrument. And I took my knowledge from 
because I was a multi-instrumentalist playing guitar and fiddle, obviously. And so I took those skills and moved them over to the bass. And it really just came naturally to me. Yes. And then Kristen, when she plays, she picked up the bass like around a year later. And she, she her main instrument is also mandolin and drums and many other instruments as well mm -hmm. but she definitely started to play the bass inspired by a mandolin and she just has this epic flavor when she plays the bass she's all over the place doing leads <laughs> yes one of the unique things about our band the k3 sisters band is that we do in fact have three bassists bassists <laughs> in the band there you <laughs> right? go and so each one of us truly has a unique playing style. As Kelsey said, I have this, I took the skills that I had from the mandolin and the guitar, and I just put it into the bass. You know, our music philosophy is taking that instrument, like the bass guitar, mm -hmm. and using it to fit our original song the best way it can. So, you know, all these bassists of the past we have learned from, like Adam Clayton of U2. U2. Paul McCartney. Cal oh my goodness, love him. <laughs> Phil Lesh of The Dead. <laughs> yes, and Callum Hood of Five Seconds of Summer. We have learned from their greatness, but also found our own unique style because at the end of the day, as a band, it's important to have your own sense of style. Yes. And so that's why our fans love hearing <laughs> each of us play. It. And those iconic bass lines that we've created, like our songs on Vampires on Gloria Street oh, or yes. The Sting or Breakout, which is on Jeff Blackheart. So many of our great bass lines are by them. And yes. <laughs> that's what we love is making those iconic bass lines that our yes. fans, as soon as the song starts, they're like, oh, I know what song this is. <laughs> yes. But sometimes the bass must remain subservient to to if it's like an anthem song, the lyrics have to come yes. through because we are a vocal band. That's we true. specialize in three-part harmony. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it depends on what the song requires. Now, that's a very interesting choice. And one of the biggest challenges that multi-instrumentalists or in musicians that play more than one instrument have is detaching from other instruments when they're playing bass. So for example, if you're a guitar player, it's hard not to think like a guitar player when you're playing bass, because as a guitar player, you are filling space more. You are maybe complementing in a different fashion. Whereas with the bass, you have to take into consideration both the percussive elements and your melodic elements. And a lot of times those will be different and synchronized in a, in a different fashion. Do you, do you find it challenging to separate the two? You know, definitely that comes into play. And because we are a vocal band at the core, we are, when one of us is playing bass, we're also singing at the same time. So we're not just, you know, getting the, the luxury of some of these epic bassists who maybe don't sing any anything at all and they get to just play the bass but we have to do that and sing at the same time and we so much respect those people who get to do that and we just love getting to challenge ourselves at times and play some really cool bass licks while <laughs> we, while we're singing well and not to mention the fact indeed in, in addition to the music because of the media where you are being seen you're streaming there's a big visual component to the performance as well. And is, again, even looking at the studio where you are right now, that's quite a studio. That's quite a, a setup there. So, yeah, this studio is where all of our crazy magic happens. We do concerts here almost every Saturday, and we have now amassed over 2 billion worldwide views. Wow. And, you know, a couple hundred thousands of those views are of us playing the bass in this room, Raul. <laughs> and so whenever we come in here, we just love to let the magic explode. This is where it happens. Nice. Well, and I can definitely see that kind of a combination of passions blend because you're obviously Harry Potter fans. <laughs> that's That's noticeable. But you've also done like Beatles yes. pieces. You kind of, a lot of times will address themes. And I know recently you did Year of the Dragon streaming. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, 
we love to theme our concerts. We just think that's a fun way to do it. And with Harry Potter, we just really love showing our passion of Harry Potter through our music because a lot of Potterheads out there are craving for some kind of new content. And so are we. So, like, we created it ourselves. That's what we did <laughs> with our original songs and with our videos. And uh, let me just say, this is so cool to be asked all these music questions because a lot of our interviews have been about our our videos or about you know the numbers and so it's so cool to be asked about the music questions as well yes and i noticed that you mentioned the beatles yes we did last year it was actually for april fool's day <laughs> we came together we were like we want to pull like kind of just a fun, not really a prank, but just like a fun thing we could do for our K3SB fam, which is what we call our fans. Mm -hmm. And April Fool's Day happened to land on Saturday. And so the three of us and our mom, we dressed up as the Fab Four. <laughs> and, yeah, and our fans kept thinking that we were going to play a Beatles cover, but because of copyright, we didn't want to get whatever that is called. Yeah, copyright Copyrighted for that and all that. So, yeah. so we kept saying, all right, guys, let's do the one about that girl. You know that one. <laughs> and then we would do our own song, Chloe yes. the Fleur. Yeah. Because we yes. have a lot of songs that are inspired by the Beatles or maybe just even have like a similar song title. And so we would do our songs that were kind of inspired by the Beatles or had that sound. But we were acting like the Beatles in totality, <laughs> with the accents from Liverpool, <laughs> with the short wigs. Yes. I even had the Hofner bass I was playing. Yes, we have a Hofner bass. <laughs> but one unique thing about us is that we have a over 100 original song repertoire. And so each set list that the three of us designed together, because we're the songwriters, we, we never do the same set list. Yes twice mm. so like for this year of the dragon that set list will probably never be played again <laughs> and so our fans each week as they come back they're hearing something new this setup is always new and different there's always something new to see and so that is really refreshing for our fans and for the music scene as well we have even more original songs cooking right now oh we found it oh, wow. <laughs> here it is love. <laughs> yes love do you job. see this raul yes this is it man I love, we played this. <laughs> I love this baby but because we're constantly switching sometimes our fans the k3sb fam can guess what song we're gonna play based on who is playing what instrument so like if Kristen has the bass on and I have on the fiddle, then, oh, our fans are like, that must be their song, Cotton Candy Sky. Or it, they, they, they just know. I don't know how they do. But yeah. before we even play the first note, they're already guessing the song. So, so that's actually how they deemed me to be the third bassist was we were trying a new band configuration, which is where we switch our instruments. And in this configuration, Kelsey was on acoustic guitar, Kaylin was on fiddle, and nobody was on bass. Oh. And so all of a sudden I said, well, who's going to play the bass? And then we look and over. All eyes <laughs> and, on me, Raul. and so ever since that rehearsal, I have been Five years ago, I've been the third bassist of the band. And so, again, it's whatever the song requires. And so I really have had so much fun getting to explore my psyche on the bass and finding myself through the bass. I remember the first song that I played the bass on at a live concert was our original song, California Redwood. Wow. And it was like a euphoric experience <laughs> being on stage. And I remembered feeling my soul connect to the bass, which is that Gibson SG. It was right on that yeah. road. And I've been happy playing the bass ever since, Raul. Nice. Well, you've definitely discovered, I think, one of the key elements that all of us that play bass feel. And it is more of a feeling than anything else. It's kind of centered right right here in the middle of, of your like sternum. This is where we resonate. And from there, it kind of shoots straight up. And so it, it, it is a, a very spiritual kind of moment that goes beyond just the auditory and, and the visual. And I think that is what colors, again, colors the music. Now, as we're talking, you've mentioned so many original tunes. How do you guys write your songs? What, uh, how does composing work with, with the three of you? Yeah, so songwriting for us is 
pretty different on any day. You know, someone like me could come up with the hook or the chorus and the verse of something, or Kristen could come up with this already song that has a melody and that's it. It has this melody. And then we'll all three come together and arrange it and figure out, okay, what kind of chord mm. did you just sing? Yeah. <laughs> and we'll figure all that out together in here. So it really is a collaborative effort with any of our songs. Yeah, you know, the type of music we write isn't necessarily what corresponds with what is popular in the industry. We write songs and create melodies based on whatever we are feeling and thinking mm -hmm. because we try to stay in touch with our generation because deep down, we're all confused and kind of hurting. And so our songs are meant to give healing and one song we wrote called Sticks and Stones, it is our anti-bullying song. Mm -hmm. We actually wrote, it's, I think it's 10 years old this year, isn't it? The K3 motto wow. and the song yes. Sticks and Stones yeah. that corresponds with that. We wrote a motto and I think we should tell Raul our motto. Yes, we will share the motto. It is this, I will always believe in myself and celebrate my life and the lives of others. I will respect the music and customs of others as long as they are not harmful to anyone. I will stand against bullying of any kind and choose love over hate. Hashtag K3 motto. <laughs> so yeah, our music and our videos that we create as we've amassed over 2 billion worldwide views, I still can't believe that. We, we really want to spread positivity in this world and messages of overcoming hate and the despair that our generation, that all generations, have faced throughout their lives. Mm -hmm. And it's a blessing that we have built this fandom, the K3SB fam, that we get to share those thoughts through with our music. Nice. Well, you're in so much more intimate contact with your fan base because of the, again, the media and this kind of message that, again, it is difficult growing up without question. And it's been different as the years have gone by. Back in my day, you only had either your friends to talk to, you could talk to your family, but we we did not have this massive expansion of people and, and certainly bullying, online bullying being a, an important thing that can happen. You know, if I went to school and fell down, two people saw it and that's all there was to it. Now, if somebody goes to school and falls down, it gets a million views. And then... <laughs> <laughs> they feel shamed because of it. And so being able to bring this positive kind of message in this same way, I think, helps your fans not feel necessarily so alone and so desperate to be all by themselves. And so this is it's a, it's a tremendous cause. Thank you, Raul. Thank you. <laughs> so... We should talk a little bit about the future because you guys are so busy. I mean, it is hard, even since I just started kind of planning for this interview, you've done so much like in the last weeks, but what's in the works? What, what can we look forward to in the future? Mm, Raul, <laughs> yes. we're always scheming. <laughs> this is something our fans learned very early on, <laughs> is that we are always cooking up something, including right now <laughs> yes well one very exciting thing we have going on because we've been a band now for 15 years and we've been doing these live streams now for over four years we have this huge music catalog or the archives as some mm -hmm. people say recording of recordings yeah. of our live music and recorded music in the studio so we are this this friday uh going to launch our very first radio show called K3SB Radio. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and it'll be exclusively on our website, k3sistersband.com. And we are so excited to share the stories and the behind the scenes stuff that happened with these live recordings and just to show off some of our older stuff that our fans maybe haven't heard yet. Yes, we're going to get to surf the waves of time with our K3SB fam as we look back at some of our most iconic performances in our 15 year catalog yeah. and some of our favorite recordings. So this is a new and 
awesome way that we get to connect with the K3SB fam. Yes, we're so excited for K3SB Radio. It's going to be so much fun all year long. We're just going to keep coming out with these episodes. And we're just so excited because we've been dreaming about doing something like this since we were really little. (laughs) As far as I can remember, we were always dreaming of having our own radio show. But yes, make sure to tune in at k3sistersband.com. Also, our fans know from our One Piece rap music video that we did tease our next music video that we will be releasing. And so they can look forward to that as well. The Breakout music break video. Out, break yes, out. That music is coming video. out soon. <laughs> Breakout is a song off of our new album, Jet Black Hearts, which you can mm-hmm. also stream exclusively on our website, k3sistersband.com. And that is just such a great, empowering song. And I can't wait to put the visuals to it because yes. it's going to be very epic. There are a lot of new elements with the breakout music video. And uh, coming up, we are going to be in Universal Studios, Orlando, Florida. As you know, Raul, we are huge Harry Potter fans. <laughs> and we are going to be teaming up with our friends at Orlando Informer to meet the k 3 fam and fellow Potterheads. And to do some more video filming there for our fans and special live streams for people that can't come to meet us in person. Very cool. Well, I am uh, a Potterhead, I guess, to the extent where I hadn't been reading for many, many years and picked up Harry Potter and went back to reading since it was so much fun. Um, Coming back to you've mentioned your website, also social media. Where can people find out more if they if they haven't looked at your website where should they go yes you can find us on all social media instagram facebook tiktok and youtube all at k3 sisters band and you can stream our music exclusively at the website that's the only place you can stream it at k3 sisters band.com for free yes no ads with no pesky ads (laughs) very cool well ladies Kaylin, Kelsey, Kristen, thank you so much for taking time to chat with us. We're very excited about so many things that are coming in the works, and there's so much work to look back to in the archives that people that don't, they're not familiar with your work should definitely go there and check it all out. Folks, you've seen them here on Bass Musician Magazine, the K3 Sisters Band. Thank you so much. much. We love you, Bass Musician Magazine. (laughs) And thank you for all that you do with the musician community. Yes, we're really honored. Thank you again. (laughs) Yes. My pleasure. Bye-bye.